Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate the chance to, uh, to uh, be here and talk with you. I'm going to give a, uh, a really boring uh, plumbing talk uh, because that's, that's what we are. We're plumbers. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about Internet 2 to begin with. Um, founded in 1996, not-for-profit, funded by members, governed by members. Um, we have 257 uh, universities, all the, the major research universities, a lot of smaller schools. Uh, EPSCOR schools, we pretty much cover the country, but of course there's another several thousand schools that we don't have yet. Uh, RNE networks, we don't actually connect with universities very much. We connect with regional networks who serve as traffic aggregators, uh, and they are the ones who connect with universities. We connect to them. Um, affiliate members, we have uh, organizations such as NSF, NIH, uh, Veterans Administration, uh, American Council on Education, and so on. These are sort of not non-for-profit or government organizations that, that uh, believe in what we do. Industry members, all the usual players, uh, Cisco, IBM, uh, you think of it, everybody but Microsoft have just quit. We're not exactly sure why. Um, the Board of Trustees, um, we are actually, we are governed by the research universities. Um, they are our Board of Trustees. They tell us what to do and they have told us in no uncertain terms that our primary responsible responsibility is to research and to the major research universities. We can do other things, but that's where we, that's where our sweet spot is. Here's our network, um, came up a couple of years ago. Um, the yellow lines are, are uh, except for that tier across from Chicago to uh, Seattle, uh, all those yellow lines are owned by us, they're 20 year, uh, 20 year leases on, on fiber. Um, each one of those at current technology, which is a sort of 100 gigabits, uh, per wavelength has a capacity of 8.8 .8 terabits. Um, so there's lots of capacity there, much of which is not used yet. The red dots are, are switches where you can connect to the network. Those switches are, uh, uh, are all uh, open flow enabled, which means, which means that this is a software defined network. That is a network at the moment can be programmed by us, but the next iteration will make a RESTful interface uh, to users to allow, to allow you to configure the network as you wish. So you can build your own private network. You can reconfigure it on the fly to, uh, to accomplish whatever sort of data transfer you want to think about. It's a big network and we're not afraid to play with it. And um, we're anxious to, uh, to uh, hear from you about ways that we can use it uh, effectively to accomplish the goals of, of NDS. If on the other hand, at the moment, all you want is, is a, a plain old fashioned vanilla common or garden backyard, backyard uh, IP network, we have that as well. The, uh, the blue dots are uh, great big juniper routers. And so this just looks like a, another piece of the internet. It, it, it works, it moves data at 100 gigabits. And um, yeah, it does that. Then, we're not just a national organization. We connect internationally. We have a, we, we have a presence at, at the WICS, which is a Washington Internet Exchange, actually in McLean, Virginia. Uh, Manland at 32 Avenue of the Americas in New York, where we connect over to Europe. We have a, a point of presence and a data store in Singapore to, um, to uh, service the needs of our member institutions who have campuses in China. We're about to open one in Fujairah in the United Arab Emirates for the benefit of our institutions who have campuses over there. <clears throat> uh, oh yes, the, uh, we have um, in a, a link across the Atlantic, which is absolutely unique uh, in that it is not funded by any government organization. It is a, a collaborative enterprise of, of ESnet, Internet2, Surfnet, um, Tata Communications, and a couple of other uh, part partners. This is 100 gigabits across the Atlantic from uh, New York, from Manland, to uh, Netherlight in Amsterdam. Um, we have access to other global open light path exchanges, uh, Starlight in Chicago, um, Atlantic Wave in, uh, in uh, Miami, Pacific Wave along the West Coast. And th the point of this is that, that there is connectivity to virtually every, well, I think actually every, uh, research and education network around the world. If we don't have an MOU with a particular organization, it's not because we don't exchange traffic with them, it's just that we haven't gotten around to the formality of, of writing things down yet. The point is that this is, a, this is a national network with international connections. 
So we are, you are, you are connected with researchers everywhere in the world to the extent that you want to be. Um, in addition to, to, to the, the plumbing, we offer services above the net. We call them net plus services. Uh, you've heard some of these mentioned already uh, in Common Federation. In addition to, to federated identity, we're also talking with our sister international network in, in Europe, Jayant, about interfederated identity because there's an identity federation in Europe. We're trying to interfederate, interfederate with them. Um, we offer a certificate service. Um, if you subscribe to this, you have an unlimited number of certificates if you care to, to uh, use uh, cryptographic security for anything. Um, we offer a multi-factor authentication if you really care about, about uh, uh, harder security. Uh, you can have, have this service. Uh, Shibboleth is the open source uh, software that underpins the Incommon Federation. Group and co-manage our uh, group, group uh, management and a couple of, uh, of uh, LDAP database schema there. Cloud services, um, you see them up there. There's, they are, the top ones are ones that are in actual production at this point. Uh, the next group are, are, uh, are uh, in what we call service trials or serv mm, early user or something like that. Anyway, they will graduate to a general availability at some point. Globus is uh, in this list somewhere, but uh, neither Ian or I are, are exactly sure where, but it's working its way up the process and it will be a, uh, an internet to net plus service uh, sooner or later. Um, then we do lots of other stuff. We do, we do workshops, we do training. Um, our new layer two network, which we call the advanced layer two services, I think. Um, it's a programmable network and you sort of have to learn how to use it. So we, we offer workshops. We've only given about half a dozen of them so far, but it's a continuing series called Operating Innovative Networks. And if you want to learn how to use uh, this fancy network, you can come to one of these workshops. Um, then as far as the long tail is concerned, we've been running a series of workshops called Broadening the Reach which are workshops on network technology um, aimed at non-research intensive schools and smaller institutions because the, the big data disease is infecting even small schools uh, as, as they find that the data they have to work with, the data they want to use both for, for research and teaching and scholarly purposes in general uh, are too big not only to fit on the laptop, they won't fit on the local data center either. Um, we do performance workshops. Um, it's, it's probably no surprise to you that the network doesn't always deliver what you think it ought to. Um, we get lots of calls of people saying, you know, we've got this 10 gigabit, we're paying for this 10 gigabit connection to the campus, but we only seem to be able to get 50 megabits. Uh, what's wrong? Well, we, we give workshops on, on how to fix that, uh, all the way from host tuning um, to, uh, to how to troubleshoot a network. One of the most Important tools for troubleshooting a network is something called Personar. It's a, uh, it's a well-known and open source uh, tool for figuring out what's going wrong with the network. Um, we're in a, in a collaborative development with Indiana University and our friends at ESnet in uh, bringing this up to, uh, to what we would call, what we would like to call uh, enterprise software standards, which it hasn't been in the past. We have an interesting collaboration with, uh, with our friends at uh, the National Center for Biomatics Information, part of NIH. Um, lots of people are starting to use Amazon you know, to, to store stuff. And sometimes that doesn't always uh, work very well. So we're, we're doing an experiment with Amazon right now uh, and our friends at NCBI uh, to put Personar at Amazon. Now, Personar depends on, on on sort of accurate timing. So you can, you can imagine that if you put, put it on a virtual machine, you're not exactly sure how, those, how that timing is going to work out because your virtual machine might, you know, might be subsumed by something else at, at this particular moment. So what we're doing is an experiment to, to compare the, the um, not the accuracy, but the, the, the jitter in measurements when you put a person on a node at Amazon on, on a virtual machine versus putting it on, uh, on bare metal, which is another service you can get from Amazon. So that's just, 
And we do network troubleshooting. If, um, you know, if your network is not, we take responsibility for the end-to-end -end performance of the network system. And if you think about it, uh, in, any, in any collaboration, there may be as many nine ne as, as nine networks involved, you know, interconnecting. Um, and we will help you troubleshoot the whole first Lugner mess if necessary. We uh, digital the digital preservation network Deepin, which has been mentioned uh, earlier today, uh, is an unincorporated entity that is is uh, operated within Internet Two. Um, I won't go on about it. We we are an organizational member of Research Data Alliance, and I hope to find out from Mark Parsons today uh, exactly what that entails. Um, uh, NSF proposals, we, we, help, we help people prepare NSF proposals, particularly if you're going to use the Internet 2 network, if you're going to use some, some, some non-standard feature of it or some novel feature, we'll help you uh, with that. Um, we'll provide letters of support for your proposals. We have working for us, um, how many of you know Neely Tonnenbaum, anybody? No, nobody here. She, she is a, a woman who works on that too, who is, has a, about 35 years of experience in research project administration. She knows uh, all the rules for NIH. She knows all the rules for NSF. Um, she's helping NIST rewrite their rules. Um, so if there's, if there's something in, 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 a, in a research project or in a, in a proposal uh, that she doesn't know the regulation about, it doesn't exist. Uh, so we can help with uh, with proposals. The research wave program, I guess, is uh, is uh, if you really want to experiment with networks, and I don't think you do, but if you do, uh, we can give you a piece of the network to play with. We're happy to do that. At, I mean, you can bring in your own own lasers and, and light the thing if you want to. And finally, uh, the Innovation Platform Initiative is an initiative that has been subscribed to by, I think, about 36 campuses so far, which, which and these campuses have, have committed by the end of this year, this calendar year, to have brought 100G into the campus, not just to the, not, not, not just to the campus edge, but into the campus. Um, they have promised to install a science DMZ. Does anybody know what a science DMZ is? OK, some of you, good. Um, look at fasterdata.es.net. It's uh, a uh, this is a concept produced by our friends at ESnet. It's a way to get high bandwidth into the campus uh, without making the campus security officer have conniptions. And the third the third element of the uh, innovation initiative is the promise to install software defined networking into the into the campus. So that the so that the facilities and the possibilities of the Internet to advance our to a network will be available to the campus. Questions? I told you it would be boring. <laughs>